All right, about to call Sergei Letov of Soviet band DK. Hey man, how you doing? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm uh, I'm listening. Yes. Okay, I, I I'm at home. That's awesome. I'm I'm happy to hear from you, brother. How was your gig? Mm, uh, it was some. Uh, I play music for. Uh, silent uh, little silent movie based on Chekhov. Oh. Uh, uh, double bass, so-called double bass, and uh, for uh, actor uh, reciting uh, uh, novels, uh, short stories of uh, Chekhov. It was in literary museum. Nice. In Moscow, it was some. Yeah, I play with uh, bass flute and electronic wind. Uh, synthesizers and my friend played piano and some little electronic devices. I was gonna say I've been listening to DK for roughly seven to eight years now and just within the last 24 hours I discovered practically all the rest of your music and I've got to mm -hmm. say you are one of the most talented individuals who I've ever come across. <laughs> you are very kind. <laughs> I'm honestly very blown away by your musical history, and I just, the first question I'm going to ask you is, where did your influences come from? How did you start DK? I just want to hear your origins. Uh, DK, uh, uh, for the first time, uh, I li uh, heard about D uh, DK, uh, by uh, through one of uh, musicians, uh, Dmitry Yanshin, guitar player, who just came to my home apartment. Uh, I, I lived in not in Moscow, but in suburb of Moscow, so called Kraskovo. It's a little village uh, near Moscow. I lived there for 20 years. <laughs> And uh, he came just and uh, asked me, can't you go with me? We are uh, musicians, we would like to record the album. And uh, he brought me to the first uh, so-called rehearsal or recording session because it was uh, not in special studio, but in some uh, house of culture. The decay in Russian, it means Dom Kultura, it means House of Culture. Oh, wow. It's some kind of, yes, it is some kind of club. Uh, uh, dom, it means, uh, a house, it means, uh, in, in Russia, it's Dom, it means house. And uh, uh, Kultura, culture. So it's, uh, and it was, uh, the recording sessions was in some, Originally, House of Culture in in Moscow near the factory Dynamo. Uh, I read so that called, between. Uh, oh, sorry. I read that between 1980 and 1990, DK released over 40 albums. Uh, 40, about uh, 30, I suppose. It was something. Originally, it was 33 or something uh, uh, about, but, but these albums, what uh, it was secretly recorded. It, it was not possible to go to yeah, so the uh, shop and buy. It was uh, uh, it was originally what was the album? It was something like um, real to real tape recording recordings with uh, some kind of. Uh, uh, just inscription on uh, on the, this uh, paper box uh, uh, reco recorded by pencil because <laughs> uh, just record in very uh, how to say it it was not so uh, not uh, uh, beautiful inscription but something like uh, you can read it only if you uh, 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 difficult to explain. I so think I understand it's what you're saying. That you, 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 it's not something that uh, 
uh, you can read only if you will uh, look at it uh, specially and uh, gi give some attention to it because uh, f uh, if you are not know that it was written something you cannot read it <laughs> yeah. uh, yes and uh, uh, so it uh, so it be because it was completely un unofficial. It's what some kind of uh, some forbidden knowledge uh, or something like that. Uh, uh, be, mm, I cannot say that it was some secret things, uh, but it was some almost secret. Underground. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, Yes, it was some kind of underground, and but but not in modern sense of it, but it was some kind of uh, <laughs> obscure, yeah, and, I get, uh, I get what subversive, you mean. subversive, subversive practice. Uh, something that uh, uh, only for people who know what is it. Uh, yeah, those people can understand what is it, but uh, not for. Uh, People for common people. So, would you consider DK to have been a punk rock band? Like, was there a punk rock scene back then? Um, I suppose no. It was some uh, in uh, at first sight. Uh, uh, it looked like punk band, but in reality, I suppose it was some kind of conceptual uh, musicians, cons like. Uh, conceptual art uh, but uh, it looked uh, like punk but uh, the music was not punk I have learned this it, quite it, a bit actually it's more artistic yes yes it was some kind of yeah, I suppose conceptual art it is more close to John Cage music <laughs> than to rock band uh, but uh, Mm, it's it's quite often in uh, Russian culture the common meaning, uh, Western meaning of uh, things, literal meaning. It, it, it's covered by something else, uh, the, 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 which has uh, the image of uh, some punk band or rock band, but in, inside uh, this, it's some other thing. It's like in DK also. It was not uh, really punk band but uh, it look like punk band another question I was going to ask you is I can understand some Russian I'm I'm nowhere near fluent in the language I wish I was but to anyone out there who listens to this and um, who listens to your band and who has no knowledge of the Russian language explain or summarize DK's lyrical content in your own words to English listeners Uh -huh. they, uh, or what the band uh, stood for. It's easy to explain it because it's uh, it, uh, it's very the content of uh, decay story is mostly uh, imitation of uh, Im imitation of uh, punk scene. It looks like uh, punk, but in reality, it is not punk. It's conceptual. It's like a, like a fake fake punk music or fake fake rock music or uh, it's kind of um, uh, uh, imitation. It's uh, l like you know mimicry in uh, the uh, like parody. It's like parody, uh, but uh, it's not only parody. Yes, like parody, but it's uh, um, like some pretension to be uh, musicians. So um, it, it's very close to art, but it, it is not art. Like a conceptual artist, sometimes yeah, I... they look like pictures, but it uh, they. Uh, picture uh, very bad, m made very bad quality, or it's uh, like uh, that. Yes, it is like some some things that it's not true meaning of things. 
What was it like having a band like that during the Soviet Union? Uh, what, 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 once more? I said, what was it like having a band like the one you had during the USSR, or the Soviet Union? Uh, no, I didn't understand. Okay, um, actually I'll ask this question first. What was it like growing up during the Soviet Union? Uh, what is a gr to, uh... What was life like during the USSR? The Soviet Union. Uh, mm, uh, the uh, the life in Soviet Union yes. in different times uh, was uh, different uh, lives. Uh, uh, the 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 key it's very co connected to the uh, last decade of uh, uh, Soviet Union life. Uh, it. Uh, I, I just came in uh, 1984. It was last uh, seven years of Soviet Union, uh, and uh, it uh, the life in the these seven years. It, you can divide it into two parts. The first uh, till 1985 and after, because in 1985 starts so-called perestroika. It means it uh, more uh, change uh, in some liberal ways of uh, everything uh, since the this since uh, September of 1985 it changed to more liberal ways more western became life be, be, began westernized uh, became more more democracy and more open uh, less less forbidden than uh, but uh, the before 1985 uh, it was very strictly controlled by KGB because in 1984 the general secretary of communist party of uh, Soviet Union be became uh, the uh, uh, Andropov, uh, it was uh, a former uh, chief of KGB. He became the like a president. Yes, it, uh, general secretary of Communist Party was a real leader of country, le real uh, like president or prime minister. And uh, of course, his uh, knowledge of life is a way of how control everything was connected with her organization. Is his organization, KGB Secret Service. So, the '84 it was very um, uh, the life in uh, Soviet Union was very strong, con uh, controlled by uh, this man and his organization. It, in 1984, uh, 1984, 1985. In '85, Gorbachev came. Andropov died because of he he had a problem of uh, kidney or something like that, and he he just uh, governed Russia about one year or something, and he he died in his place came Gorbachev, who changed everything in the late Soviet Union, uh, but uh, this change bench came uh, uh, in eighty five. And uh, really, in '87, so the life of uh, in Soviet Union in the last four years since '87 till '91, it, it was the most uh, comfortable life in the sense of uh, we had no uh, control of police, and uh, the life became very. Li uh, it was life became very liberal and. We have much more freedom to do everything. In, in just time, 87, uh, uh, it was the time when I uh, stopped to, to play in uh, this band, in the, the key. So I played 84, 85, 86, 87. And then after 87, uh, uh, the key lose uh, much more of his um, ideas because it was 
the secret underground anti-government anti-soviet band and it loses uh, the main idea of his existence because uh, there were no uh, uh, political oppression since 1987. <laughs> uh, so the the uh, decay had sense uh, uh, of uh, some kind of political struggle. Uh, when it was some political oppression uh, and political oppression existed till 1987 so decay existed since 81 or 80 till 87 Wow hmm? yes it's clear no <laughs> not, I... not everything <laughs> Damn. yeah you're the first you were the only person from the Soviet Union who I've ever spoken to just to, just uh, to let you know that that's why I'm asking uh, these questions um so uh -huh, uh -huh. what year were you born if I'm if I may ask uh, when when I what? uh when were you born uh, if I may ask I was bo born uh, I was born in uh, Kazakhstan uh, uh the year in... Uh, in uh, 1956. So, uh, what was it like for I, you I as was a born, kid? Uh -huh. uh, uh, and uh, then I, uh, I was born in Semipalatinsk. Semipalatinsk is like uh, Nevada in United States. It's uh, the place where it was polygon of atomic nuclear weapons. And... Um, uh, I was a little bit irradiated when I was a child. Then my parents moved to Omsk. It's uh, a place where my brother was born. Uh, we moved to, my family moved in 1959 to Omsk and I lived in Omsk um, till, 70, uh, till 72. And after I moved to Moscow, so I not uh, uh, native Moscow. Oh wow! It. I just came to Moscow from Siberia, like uh, many many Moscowites who came to Moscow from all the other parts of Soviet Union or Russia or other uh, Soviet republics. But I was not native here, and some other musicians uh, from DK also were uh, from other like uh, a bass player Polanski he came from Crimea uh, you know Crimea yeah it's uh, same it. semi on Black Sea and uh, uh, Dmitry Yanshin uh, guitar player he was born in Moscow region not in Moscow but uh, suburbs of Moscow it's like like New Jersey to to New York <laughs> <laughs> I get it's you. like uh, very close, but not the same. Uh, and uh, uh, Zharikov, uh, his real surname was Zharinov. Uh, he was the, the uh, real uh, the drummer of the band and author of some uh, most important text. I suppose he was from Moscow. He was uh, Moscovite. Uh, and uh, the life in the late Soviet Union it was maybe the most comfortable life in the Soviet Union, you know, also, and the life in Moscow was most comfortable in Soviet Union. <laughs> it's uh, the best, of best food, uh, much more information, and uh, uh, but uh, life in Moscow was under uh, strict control of Communist Party, but because of uh, in Soviet Union, uh, the Communist Party supports that the Moscow must be ideal communist town, communist city. Uh, not like uh, near Moscow, uh, not near, but it was St. Petersburg, Leningrad. It was much more liberal because a lot of tourists from the West come there, bring uh, uh, magazines, uh, music instruments, and some other things. It was much more 
uh, liberal uh, and much more informated. And Moscow was more uh, total, to, total, totalitarian uh, place uh, than, than others and was under control of Communist Party. Uh, like uh, you cannot uh, uh, had uh, long hair uh, or you cannot wear jeans or things like uh, you not look like Western uh, and things like that. They pretend to to control it. Uh, so it's some 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 little features that it's not uh, for so co completely unknown for. Uh, modern uh, modern people in uh, modern young people in so in in Russia. Wow. Yeah, I've uh, I can't imagine what life would have been like there. But uh, the uh, I'm uh, it's life was not bad. Uh, 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 no people, uh, it's not like a gulag or some. Something so, but uh, it was uh, just comfortable life. Uh, um, uh, everything was uh, had almost the same equal uh, level of life. It, it, we have almost no rich people, no poor people. Everything was average. Uh, almost all the people had the same salary for for work. Uh, and uh, in uh, you cannot lose your job because uh, uh, it was trade union very strong in the Soviet Union. You cannot you can not lose job uh, 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 in Soviet Union. It was no unemployment. It was no poor no people. No unemployment. No unemployment in Soviet Union. There were no unemployment. What happened if someone got sick and couldn't go to work? Uh, uh, what what? What happened uh, if somebody became ill or sick and couldn't go to work, or if someone got uh, disabled? Uh, he he came. He get uh, almost the same salary from the government. Damn. Uh, uh, yes, almost almost. Uh, no, maybe not one hundred percent. Uh, but support, but uh, like uh, seventy percent support. Uh, so if you, uh, so people not worked hard because uh, if you cannot lose your job, uh, there there's no force. No to... incentive to work harder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. So uh, the uh, people pretend pretend that they, they work. But in reality, they just talk with each other, make love or something, <laughs> tell the funny story. No, 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 you can imagine. The, it's, and the, they almost everybody had the same salary. So the salary was, was the salary in the, uh, for worker was about one hundred fifty rubles in a month. Uh, salary of engineer, I was engineer was 120 rubles in a month. Uh, the uh, military officer, 300 rubles in a month. Uh, the, the cleaner, 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 70 rubles in a month. <laughs> wow. So, so, uh, so there was no, and it's, uh, women had the pension since 55. Uh, men go to uh, pension, uh, had pension uh, uh, in 60, after 60 years, and things like that. <laughs> so uh, uh, so the, the, uh, life was, uh, uh, if you compare with modern life, uh, uh, something became better, but something became worse. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could compare the Soviet Union to um, Putin's Russia. To, to, um, so, uh, in uh, in Soviet Union, there were no prostitution, completely. I feel no prostitution. In Soviet Union, there was no hunger. Uh, was uh, almost no criminality. Almost no criminality. 
uh, and uh, and now we we have a lot of of criminality not ar not in moscow but around moscow and uh, people became some people became but uh, uh, for example nobody can go abroad before uh, I've read Soviet that. Union, uh, and and just now the people can no no join in coronavirus. Of course, we cannot go out of Russia now. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, we we can go for but for few countries like Turkey, Great Britain, Switzerland, and some Af one Africa country and uh, it uh, four or five countries now in coronavirus. But uh, just my daughter, just now sh she's in Turkey. She went for holiday now. But in the uh, Soviet Union, almost nobody can go. Only high rank functional, uh, high rank communist can go. Um, but not for vacants, but, but for, for, for job or something like that. Uh, so we have something better, something worse. But in Soviet Union, we, 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 we don't like things that we had, and we cannot imagine that we can lose uh, this situation. Uh, of course, we would like to, to, to live Western life, but we had not uh, understand what is it in reality. <laughs> yeah, Jim. I wanted to talk about the first DK album that I found about seven or eight years ago that in, that got me into your band. And pardon me if I say this incorrectly, because as I said, I'm not fluent in Russian, but did you play on the album Bogdan yet? No. Uh, Boganet, uh, Boganet, it means uh, there, there is no God. I know that much, uh -huh. but that's about and, all I know. Uh, Boganet no, it was the first. Uh, uh, I don't Boganito or for first album. I don't re remember now. Was it first? Maybe Tundra. Uh, they were the first albums. Uh, Tundra maybe. But I, I just came in 1984 when the, and the first album where I was recording was called the Bright New World. It, it was named after Aldous Huxley novel, Bright New World. Uh, it was my first album, it was 84. Uh, it was recorded uh, after the singer was imprisoned. The main vocalist of the decay, uh, 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 Evgeny Morozov, he was imprisoned because he sell tape recorder. Uh. Yes, he sell tape recorder, and uh, uh, it was a Western uh, tape recorder, and he sell it no, in the price higher than uh, he bought it, uh. and it it was forbidden in Soviet Union to sell anything if you no, get uh, if you get some uh, how I say. It, uh, if you get something higher than you bought it, if you have some income, to flip not the from, price. Uh, yes, if you get income not from your labor but from merchandising or something, it was forbidden in the Soviet Union. Damn. So he was imprisoned, yes, uh, in uh, three years or something. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, in in eighteen yes, really, uh, in eighteen. Eighty-three, maybe, or or just in eight, in early eighty-four, it was first album without singer. Wow, that's that's or crazy. maybe the second album it was recorded. With, yes, without uh, and uh, for me, uh, and, and uh, after, uh, of course, uh, I made acquaintance after he was liberated from from prison. Uh, I, I, I made acquaintance with them, uh, and they contacted. I'm in contact with him till now, in friendship with the, this uh, guy, Evgeny Morozov. He was singer in Boganet and first albums. And you were the drummer for the band. 
uh, the drummer was uh, for, since beginning till the end was the same person, uh, Sergei Jarikov. Zarikov, okay. My Sergei apologies. Jarikov. But his real surname, Sergei Jarinov. Oh. Uh, it was his uh, like a uh, game, to, like uh, his uh, pseudonym or something. Uh, I think I'm looking at. You said the first album you did was released on Real to Real. Uh, all the albums were recorded on Real to Real. All of them. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, we had uh, four. Uh, we had. Um, uh, this tape machine, four, ch four channels uh, tape machine, and we recorded uh, m m typically since 84, we recorded instrumental part and uh, 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 in a recording session, and after in uh, we recorded uh, voice over. It was made uh, since uh, 1984, uh, except one album. And before, I suppose it was recorded, before me, uh, I came, it was recorded like uh, for channels or something like that. I was going to ask, tell me your experience on the first, on your first album with DK. The, uh, for me, it was very strange. I tried before to play with the rock bands, uh, uh, and uh, uh, when I came, they brought me by car to the, uh, the studio session. I came to a uh, saxophone player. Um, uh, I, rem I try to remember his name. Uh, 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 Viktor Klemyshev. And he pl he played uh, tenor saxophone and uh, trumpet, and I asked him, "Hey guy, what's your uh, tonality? What key we play now?" He said, "I play in uh, A uh, or, or B flat. I play B f in B flat, but it's my tonality. It's my tonality. You can play anything except B flat." <laughs> I was, I was shocked. <laughs> I could so I said, all of you, you are play different keys. He said, yes, we, uh, my key is B flat. So play, please, y your own keys, but not B flat. It, it, it was first words that I f first answer I get in the band. So I, I decide they are crazy, a really crazy persons. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, it, it was very strange, the first experience, uh, and then, uh, you know that uh, I was a uh, big fanatic of free jazz, like John Coltrane, Lornet Cole. Yes, I've learned that, uh, definitely. Uh, yes, and, and for that, for me, I like this idea, it was interesting. I, re I played alto uh, saxophone and bass clarinet, mostly, and l later maybe baritone saxophone and... Uh, uh, and flute, uh, and other persons play guitar, bass guitar, uh, drums, uh, uh, vocals. Um, I will say you definitely added some bright color to the to the band, with the addition uh, what, of this. What? I said you definitely added some color to the band with the saxophone <laughs> and the flute and all that. Uh, maybe, but um, if you are listening to uh, compact discs. Uh, then mostly you m change uh, you make mis uh, you listening to tenor saxophone there and tenor saxophone was Dmitry Klemyshev when uh, Sergei Zarikov edited the original uh, ta real to real tape albums in the uh, 90s or 2000s uh, uh, he, he cut off my alto saxophone part. Oh shit! Because I played mostly my solo after tenor saxophone, and tenor saxophone—it's not me. <laughs> oh. So, 
So, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the compact disc album are not the same as uh, um, uh, real to real tapes. Uh, they, he makes some additions, a change of the songs, and it was like um, <laughs> uh, uh, so the compact disc and compact discs of Deca, Decay, it's not original albums of Decay. It's some like a mixture of uh, yeah, songs from you mean. different times, you understand? Like, the I own one, it's Bobby Gannett, released December 24, 2000, CD compilation. It's... Uh, uh, once more, what time? Uh, 19... Uh, this uh, CD came out in 2000, it's a CD compilation, Bobby Gannett, two CD. Uh-huh, 2000, uh-huh. It's got 2000. some... I think it's got Stalin on the cover of it, or some uh, general with a bunch of politicians uh, on it. Pink and uh, white. Yes, yes. I know. No, uh, maybe I. I don't remember because the um, just now uh, the I was the uh, sound engineer of uh, remastering uh, in nineties of uh, almost all the albums of Decay, but uh, after two thousand four or two thousand five or two thousand seven. Uh, uh, Zharikov, he, he changed his mind and b make a remastering of uh, his remastering and re uh, another edition of these uh, compact discs. Uh, and we had uh, another edition. Uh, uh, did you m m visit my, um, uh, my website? Yes, actually, that's how I found you on Facebook. Ah. Uh, uh, in in my website there is uh, uh, dot ru uh, there is a portion uh, 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 sub site uh, sub website uh, dedicated to decay and there is uh, the some part of it it's original albums uh, pictures I I say uh, I send you link. And you will see how, but it's only in Russian, it seems to me. Uh, where, how it was called, all the uh, original uh, albums, this 35 or 33, which was recorded in Soviet Union, in uh, 80 or 81 till 87, uh, with the original personals and uh, everything, but uh, we, we, we have... Uh, uh, pictures uh, of cover cover designs, uh, but unfortunately, um, uh, I have no music for uh, uh, music of original albums of these real to real tapes. Uh, maybe some collectioneer had it. Uh, unfortunately, I quarreled with Zharikov, and we. Uh, uh, have no contacts uh, in the last 10 years, maybe. Sorry to hear that. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, we are not, I'm not speaking with him, no contacting with him uh, now. Uh, I, was going to, I was going to ask huh? you, did you participate in the 2000 or 2001 reunion of DK? Yes. Uh, it, uh, I played, uh, it was one of the, it, it was in the club which is called Appelsin. It's in, it means orange in uh, the fruit. It means yeah. fruit, orange. Uh, in Russian it's Appelsin. And I played in this Appelsin uh, concert uh, in life. Uh, it was um, another singer's uh, vocalist. Uh, vo the vocalist uh, of uh, the, uh, for this concert uh, it it was uh, Belov, Igor Belov. Uh, he died uh, oh. afterwards. Uh, uh, Rest the, in peace, uh, the, uh, Yes, the, uh, the point is that uh, uh, original vocalist of first albums in uh, like Boganet and something, uh, Kiselev, uh, uh, Tundra, these first albums, uh, 
uh, in the best vocalist, Evgeny Morozov, he also quarreled with Zharikov. Oh, <laughs> they, they are not contacting uh, and uh, Zharikov uh, forbid to everybody to perform his uh, songs anymore. Oh, shit, that's not <laughs> uh, good. Yes, yes, he he's saying that if any of you will sing these songs, uh, uh, I will. Uh, uh, you will. Uh, I put you on trial. Le legal action. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, yes, because I am only legal owner of this composition because I uh, uh, published a compact disc and uh, now compact discs and so it's my composition, things like that. <laughs> well, I guess that takes <laughs> care of the next question I was going he, to ask. He, he's behaving like a bandit in this, <laughs> like, real, bandit. like a real Russian bandit in these criminals. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I was going to ask if there would be a future DK reunion, but I guess you just answered that one. Uh, the future, I, I believe it could not be possible because I... Yeah. So maybe it could put, be possible, but without me, without Morozov, Janshin died, the guitar player. He he not died. He was killed. Uh, uh, what he happened? He was killed, uh, yes, and, uh, and the most uh, 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 shocking... He was cut. He he was buried without his his hands. His hands were cut off. What the hell? Uh, yes, uh, what the hell? He he uh, the, uh, in the last years of his life, uh, Janshin, guitar player of the car, starting to drink a lot. He was uh, he served. Uh, uh, in sub this suburb of Moscow, when I lived uh, in the 80s, uh, the region with uh, criminality, high criminality, he served as the um, uh, teacher or something like that uh, in a, uh, a college for young workers or things like that. Uh, uh, in uh, Kraskova, this region, and once uh, he was very good boxer because uh, in this uh, college uh, uh, for young workers, uh, uh, the only man who can uh, have uh, sporting enough, uh, who can defend himself, could could work. And once he. Uh, these uh, young hooligans attacked him and uh, beat him severe and after that he had a lot of headaches headaches and uh, oh, start to drink uh, yes tra yes trauma and start uh, to drink to cover his headaches that's not uh, good yes and after drinking a lot uh, uh, he became a real drunkard, uh -huh. real drunkard. Sorry he, to hear that. He, yes, him, him, and his his wife. Uh, but uh, I don't know how he he get uh, um, apartment. And I suppose that the local policeman know that he got apartment, and he. Uh, uh, I suppose uh, somebody killed him, and uh, his apartment uh, he was uh, uh, deprived of him somehow. I suppose it, it, it was uh, police and um, Caucasian mafia. Jesus. Yeah, uh, yes, they killed. Uh, this uh, guitar player, Dmitry uh. Janshin, and, deep, and uh, 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 took his apartment. Uh, and they removed and, his hands? Uh, uh, yes, and uh, they were found, uh, uh, the bodies of him and his wife were found 40 days after death. Uh, and the police pretended that he beat his wife, uh, uh, shock, and she, in uh, answer, uh, stabbed his with knife, what and the they kill each other. He's he's beating, 
and she, she is a stabbing knife what? and they fell and died both uh, it, it was some uh, uh, the most fake ideas you can yeah. imagine and to make <laughs> analysis they cut off his hands what uh, the uh, fuck? Uh, 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 yes uh, and to make some printings in printings i don't know what uh, the hell is it but uh, it was this uh, this real uh, real very uh, criminal story. So yeah, he, sounds he, like he, it. Yes, yes. But this is uh, the, the, you, you, if you listen to Deca, Dicky, you understand that <laughs> the life of and the music they are very close each other. <laughs> Conceptual, uh, yes. Yes, uh, ye, yes. And uh, Janshin died. Uh, the uh, the former. Uh, the last singer of Decade, Igor Bilov, uh, I suppose that he traded the, the junk and uh, was uh, also sometimes had the halluc hallucinations and he, he died because he jumped off uh, the window. What the uh, fuck? Uh, yes, and he, he fell from window and died. It was uh, so we have no more two participants. The bass player from DK, uh, Alec Mahmudov, the of, of the first album of DK, uh, of the, the um, he made this suicide. Uh, uh, I I don't know what the years, but uh, he. So uh, the uh, after. In eighty six, eighty five, uh, three members of DK: Janshen, uh, me, and uh, a saxophone, uh, tenor saxophone player, Klemishov. We decide to make the, um, the like a daughter band uh, of. Uh, uh, of the DK, like instrumental, yeah, instrumental yeah, part mean. of it. it. It was called uh, Visiole Kartinki. Uh, so, kind of funny pictures or something like that. And Visiole Kartinki gradually became uh, uh, the band who performed uh, openly songs of DK. But I left the group. Uh, after they start to, to sing, uh, I decided. Uh, I, I will not participate in uh, Vesiole Kartinki. So, uh, and the most uh, part of uh, this group also died of different reasons, like we were killed by uh, some hooligans or things like that. So, uh, still uh, alive. Who are still alive of DK? Jarikov, uh, Sergei Jarikov. He lived in Moscow. Uh, he was the uh, former uh, secretary of Zhirinovsky, the uh, leader of uh, Liberal Democracy Party of uh, Russia. Damn. And he was, yes, he, he, he was, so he, he, Zharikov had a short political career in uh, early early 90s. Uh, with the Zhirinovsky and his Liberal Democracy Party, like uh, 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 Eduard Limonov, uh, Zharikov, and uh, Zhirinovsky. Zhirinovsky is seen as still is the very official, uh, and the party a little absurd, absurd party. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm not contacting with him anymore. And uh, alive also the bass player, uh, Sergei Polanskich. Uh, I told he from Crimea, uh, but I'm not, I don't know is he active, he's, uh, is he playing anything. So it seems me Viktor Klemishov, he uh, went back to Tambov region, he lives in um, a small village uh, near Tambov, it's south of Russia, and uh, I, I heard that he served in the church. Oh wow! Uh, yes, uh, he's. Uh, uh, I I met him 
maybe five years ago when we sing song of the decay in some underground apartment concert. <laughs> nice. Yes, and, and maybe once or twice in some clubs, uh, maybe five, maybe seven years ago. I was, uh, I was going to ask you, um, since obviously I've never been to Russia, obviously never the Soviet Union, because I was born in 93, and I don't know too many Russian bands, but would you consider DK to be relatively known in Russia, or are they to this day obscure? Uh, it's still obscure, but uh, it had a big influence of my brother, Igor Letov who is one of the main punk musicians in uh, Soviet Union and Russia. My brother died uh, in... Uh, he, he had My a group, Grazdanska Barona, civil defense. He I was going to talk uh, about them in a minute too, actually. Uh, yes, yes. He died in uh, 2008. And uh, he, performed the, he performed Decay songs and uh, we recorded uh, album in duo. Uh, and his songs there, two songs or three songs of Decay, and he had plans to sing all songs of Decay, because he, he told he know all the texts and all the chord for guitar, guitar uh, of Decay, and he, he had planned to sing over, uh, re, re sing all the uh, Decay in his voice. He, he, he was uh, one of his ideas in early 80s was uh, um, and of course uh, all the uh, uh, the critics uh, and the journalists of the uh, all the generation of Russian uh, rock critics of course they know the decay but uh, uh, they uh, they the Zharikov mostly in quarrel almost with everybody. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> and, and yes, because he's quite strange. I suppose he's he has some mental illness. My my idea, <laughs> yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> and because he he never go out of his apartment. <laughs> oh. He yes he, he has no job. He uh, mostly he he is living because his uh, daughter support him and wife, and he's quite strange guy. He published a very strange book of absurd political analysis, but uh, the books is very uh, a few copies was printed, <laughs> <laughs> few numbered copy printed. No. You know the copies with the, his number. Every copy is like a collection years, but it's very expensive. <laughs> oh, I bet it is. <laughs> yes, and he made uh, these books mostly. He present make a presents to any uh, anybody and ask him after to pay him uh, this enormous sum of money <laughs> Jesus. for this present <laughs> because it's so expensive. I suppose it's quite, he's quite strange, really. He he, he became quite strange guy. Uh, I see. My opinion is because he was uh, he was uh, uh, one of my uh, friends' critics said me that uh, he was uh, supported by one of uh, KGB generals, uh -huh. and uh, after all his life. And after this general, uh, uh, General Dima died, uh, Zharikov uh, became crazy because he was very afraid uh, of anything now. Uh, anyway, we are not contacting. I am not contacting with him <laughs> anymore. I get that. I was going to ask a few more questions here. So you obviously know... You Civil Defense, could you tell me about them a little bit? Because I've listened to a little bit of their music. Uh, 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 Civil Defense, uh, Grazdanska Barona, uh, uh, the band of my brother, he, he founded it in uh, 1985 uh, together with his friend uh, Kuzma Rebinov, who uh, 
Кузя Уо. His real name Konstantin Rubinov. It's friend of my brother. Uh, I'm t t uh, telling about him because uh, my next concert will be dedicated to his memory. Lovely. Konstantin uh, uh, died in March of this year. And oh, my I condolences. Uh, yes, and I will go. He had a uh, in, uh, brain uh, stroke. Oh uh, no! And uh, yes, also because of drinking, I suppose. And oh, no. um, I, I, yeah, still go to Omsk, uh, his native town and the native town of my brother, uh, just to open exhibition to his memory in national in some uh, Omsk uh, museum. In the twenty of uh, uh, October, and uh, now the government forbid because of coronavirus, uh, government forbid con open concert. So we made uh, internet translation uh, transmission uh, online. Live, a live stream. Uh, uh, a live stream, yes, on uh, twenty uh, of October. Uh, me and the former participant of. Uh, I will definitely Zealand watch Defense. this. Yes, uh, uh, Manager, Manager, oh, so it's manager, Manager, uh, will come uh, and uh, the drummer of civil defense. So we will uh, meet uh, in Omsk uh, in uh, 20 of October and make uh, this live stream there. And my, bro uh, my brother, uh, uh, when I participate, start participated in Decade, I sent uh, all his recordings, this secret uh, underground albums, uh, uh, real to real tape, uh, tapes to my brother. He listened to it, and under influence of these uh, uh, albums, he started his own uh, uh, project, uh, also mostly recording the first five albums of Civil Defense. It was just recorded, not played. In concert, but recorded overdubbing uh, in home. Uh, wow. uh, yes, and uh, my brother released 53 albums. Holy shit! Um, yes, but in all his life, and he is very popular in, uh, in spite of decay, uh, civil defense is extremely popular. But it was shown on Russian. TV, Soviet TV and once Soviet in TV? life in, in Soviet never in uh, in uh, Russia oh. uh, it was only one transmission of uh, what, uh, of uh, civil defense and after this transmission all the TV workers were uh, lose their job oh, God. <laughs> immediately <laughs> it was so called program A program A yeah, and all of them were, were dismissed after this. <laughs> with, with the only concert. He never uh, uh, collaborated with radio. He never answered interview to radio or TV. He refused all the publicity. But in uh, Russia, all the uh, walls and uh, uh, lifts... Uh, uh, in uh, suburbs uh, of uh, Siberian towns and uh, everywhere, the most popular is Yegor Letov, uh, civil defense. He is uh, very popular, but uh, this popularity is the <laughs> uh, it's it, it's scandalous. Uh, the, in the last year, the government of Russia decided to uh, name airports after the most prominent people in every town of Russia. And uh, to... Uh, how to know, they make uh, something like uh, a voicing... Uh, uh, I, I can't find English word, uh, like uh, election. Election over Internet. And in Omsk, Yegor Letov get much more voice than any other person. Oh boy. Yes, but his songs uh, uh, very often uh, had uh, uh, anti-establishment narrative. 
yes, yes, uh, strong expressions and things. <laughs> the, uh, so uh, the minister, minister of culture of Russia, when he came to Omsk, uh, he was uh, asked, uh, will the airport in Omsk named after Igor Letov? He said he don't know who was uh, Igor Letov at all. Uh, it, 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 and for journalists it was a uh, shock because uh, everybody knows who is Igor Letov and Ministry of Culture no. uh, he, and so it was a big big story just now the, uh, this minister was lose his position uh, now he is not minister anymore and the uh, mayor of Omsk and gover government in Omsk uh, just now, interesting to make uh, in apartment of Igor Letov make museum, and I just uh, I propose to uh, I can give my apartment in Omsk empty to make museum of Igor Letov and uh, local government uh, made uh, clean street around made everything uh -huh. uh, yes they re renovated everything to make it more. Look like more luxurious, way more. <laughs> so they didn't end up naming an airport after him, though. No. <coughs> Damn. No, they they refuse it. They refuse the airport, but uh, uh, it, it's a lot of scandals about because some uh, uh, rich person buy the land uh, near Moscow and made a little uh, uh, for for. Uh, private AV uh, airplanes, uh, landing uh, landing space, like uh, and name it after Igor Letov. But he uh, <laughs> he was deprived of this land because this land was agriculture, something like that. So a lot of uh, funny, comic, uh, absurd stories. It's the the decay. Uh, the the line of decay come to true. Uh, it was not just the lyrics uh, and, and the fake imitations. It uh, reality. It became reality in an, uh, in uh, uh, in our life. So uh, to put it into perspective, DK's lyrics and their music was taking like what's happening in the Soviet Union and uh, just making like, drawing like a picture. When the person listens to DK, they just get a parodied picture of real life? Uh, no, it was not a uh, true uh, uh, description of the life of Soviet Union, but it was some absurd uh, comic uh, description. But, uh, okay, I think was, I get what you're saying. But it was true. But it was true. It, but it, it was uh, quite deep inside uh, in, uh, in 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 real matter of things. I think I think I finally understand your band now. Mm -hmm. I wanted to also ask about Three F Project. Three F Project, um, uh, the Yermen Anti, uh, Yermen Yerzhanov, His real name is Kazakh singer and uh, band leader. Who, uh, who was big f fan of uh, and, uh, of Igor Letov, big fan and pupil, I suppose, of Igor Letov. His uh, and uh, uh, he made uh, he invite me several times to participate as saxophone uh, player in his uh, in his band. Uh, 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 his band is called Adaptatia, Adaptation, Adaptation. Yeah. And um, uh, to this band, he invited uh, the main anarchist uh, in Russian rock, uh, Vadim Kurilov. Uh, he has a band, Electric Partisans. Uh, Kurilov uh, was uh, uh, was known mostly by his participation in the band DDT, DDT. Uh, uh, he was bass player of DDT and uh, so Yermin uh, Yerzhanov uh, asked me to participate in this project uh, 
free poetry, free noise, and free jazz. Three F. Uh, he invited me, uh, Vadim Kurilov, free noise, free electric noises. I love uh, that and, album, man. That's amazing. Yes, yes, and me, and he is res- he is uh, he is poetry is very politically engaged, a strong anarchist. Yeah, I can't fully understand anti- it, but I dig it. Yes, yes, and uh, anti uh, totalitarian. Uh, he's uh, I like him very much. I went to his uh, to Kazakhstan. Uh, Kazakhstan is my small homeland. I was born in uh, in eastern Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is quite big, uh, and um, uh, in ca- quite big in territory and quite small in population because it's mostly unpopulated. Uh, it's uh, desert. Uh, and uh, I went to he uh, he himself Yermen Yerjan in from Western Kazakhstan, uh, Aktobe, his uh, in Russian Aktubinsk, in Kazakh modern Aktobe. Uh, and I, I'm not sure we will will work, will work uh, we do something together. But he decided to make to release this 3F project. Uh, uh, and maybe we will um, perform more. I don't know because uh, Yermen stopped his adaptation. He uh, said that uh, he ceased to exist. This group uh, the, in last year in uh, June and uh, uh, since since May we start to to make the uh, farewell. Tour over Moscow, Petersburg, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, in uh, since uh, June of um, last year, Yermen Yerjanov started his solo career. No more, uh, no more adaptation. But maybe with 3F, we will do something more. We are in contact st- since still. It's good to hear. Can you tell me about uh, Killdozer, Fuck the System Jazz? Uh-huh. This is, uh, the, uh, this is mostly project idea of it, uh, Killdozer, uh, and Fuck the System Jazz. It was an idea of uh, Kurilov, Vadim Kurilov. He is activist of Russian anarchist, anarchist. All his concert, uh, is selling the anarchist uh, um, literature, manifest, uh, t-shirts, uh, banners b- m- with the, uh, with anarchist symbolics, and uh, it was his idea to support Martin John Himeyer, uh, American uh, hero. And we, we, he asked me to in ten years ago, can't we play together and record? And we went for Melodia in uh, St. Petersburg. It's situated now of the studio in a former Lutheran church in a beautiful uh, 18th century, uh, early 18th century building and we recorded it uh, not digitally but uh, only uh, real to real tape and he played there drums, guitar, bass, guitar, uh, trumpet, uh, Recorder uh, things I played uh, tenor and C melody saxophones. Uh, so we we recorded it just in one session. What and we recorded uh, the first uh, uh, the first album and uh, the two or three years after the second uh, second album. We sometimes played uh, not in Moscow, near to Moscow and Petersburg, but also. Belgorod, uh, Kaluga, some towns. But I would like this project could play more concert, but uh, it's uh, just uh, the music. Uh, and uh, Vadim, he prefer singing songs with text, anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, uh, this anarchistic ideology, and things like that. I'm not so... Um, politically engaged. I was him. gonna ask a couple political questions if you're okay with that. Uh, yes. 
Um, kind of two here. First of all, what's your stance on Vladimir Putin? Uh, it's not uh, too clear for me answer because uh, some uh, steps of Putin in uh, um, uh, international politics I can support, but things in inner politics I can't. So uh, I'm uh, have more sympathy now to the. Uh, communist party but uh, it seems to me that the uh, communist party now in uh, uh, in Russia it's uh, I cannot find the word it's uh, system it's uh, one the, of the uh, uh, one uh, the part of capital the new capitalistic system in Russia so I cannot find the party who uh, can express my attitude to to reality. We we. It seems to me it's like everywhere. It's not only in Russia. It's everywhere. Uh, but uh, the things uh, I don't like uh, of uh, Putin. I don't like when the mo mausoleum of Lenin is covered by uh, some uh, pictures and. Uh, uh, stands and everything when the nine of uh, May because uh, it's in the red square in the red square this some kind of march so demonstration and things like that uh, in in nine of may in uh, Putin cover mausoleum uh, i don't like this idea and also i i don't like uh, the the process in uh, our country that was made after 1991 so it's uh, so I could say limited support. Do you think that Putin's done a good job in uh, Russia lately? Uh, don't understand. Okay, question. sorry, that was poorly uh, worded. How has uh, Put how has Putin done with Russia's infrastructure? Um, the, the, we have a lot of. Uh, uh, it seems that the life after 2001, under uh, the Putin became governor, is uh, for last 20 years, and the life mostly became much better. Much in, better, uh, you say? Much better in uh, Moscow and most other parts of country. So because uh, the the most difficult times for me and for my family and for almost for everybody in our country it was 90s the 90s uh, 90s it was m m m most di disaster a real disaster it was like uh, hitler time i suppose oh, Jesus. Uh, in the, in the 90s like uh, and uh, after he became governor it uh, life became better life became better. I cannot support everything, uh, well, especially yeah. in inner politics, in inner politics. But as I, as I, as, as I can understand uh, his uh, things in international, I mostly, uh, I'll, not mostly, I almost uh, in everything I support him, like in Syria, in uh, other places. I went for um, Abkhazia, you know, it's near Georgia, uh, this territory, and uh, uh, I support uh, uh, some uh, Crimea things because in Crimea I live my daughter and my uh, three granddaughters, and they are extremely happy after Crimea became again part of Russia because all of them speak Russians and they are Russians in Crimea, not other and uh, nations, and for them, they are happy now. And this uh, <sighs> last political question here is honestly for any American to watch this, and I'm asking, and when I say this, I have absolutely no opinion on this myself, but a lot of Americans possibly have the wrong idea. Do you think that Vladimir Putin... Um, tampered with the 2016 election at all here? I have no opinion uh, on this. I just want mm -hmm. your opinion as a Russian citizen. Do you think no, that no, there was a collusion? No. Uh, 
about uh, el- you mean uh, uh, elections? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, do we have uh, the? Uh, I, my uh, my opinion is the different countries has different political systems, and uh, in uh, the Russian political sy- uh, system, it tends uh, has tendency to uh, strong power. If uh, this country, because uh, Russian people uh, are not very disciplined people, and the uh, country is very big, and the political system is not so strong as the American or European, so it needs uh, to have uh, uh, to prevent corruption and uh, all the bad process in life. This system needs strong power, and uh, I cannot see any strong power except Putin uh, just now. So, I don't know if he will uh, left his position, uh, uh, what became of us, uh, of uh, situation now, uh, and uh, will it be uh, war against each other uh, like it was in uh, and ca- completely chaotic like it was life in 90s. In 90s was complete chaos in uh, uh, in Russia, like a complete chaos now in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, but uh, unfortunately, we have no uh, real uh, candidates, and re- uh, we have no real oppositions in uh, modern Russia. We almost have no political life, like in Soviet see. Union. Almost no political life at all. I don't know, maybe it's it's uh, because of secret service or but uh, just now I mostly support uh, Putin. Mostly su- it it could be uh, look strange for foreigners now because we have uh, in, in, among the intelligent people uh, quite strong opposition uh, to to him. But I'm not feeling um, uh, this uh, that uh, life will be better if uh, we get another uh, 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 another opportunity. I, I, I'm see I see some politics uh, whom I respect uh, uh, in uh, modern Russia. One of them uh, whom I sympathize is uh, Sergei Shargunov. It's uh, uh, m- just uh, young uh, uh, writer, uh, prosa writer mostly, uh, and he started uh, uh, some political activity. And uh, I, I, I have sympathy for him, but uh, I don't know what will be of it. I am not so extremely politically engaged. Yeah, I, I, I sympathize to everything that is left, uh, to anarchist, uh, uh, communist, but not communist like <laughs> modern <laughs> communist party, with a fake communist party. In reality, it's fake. So Mostly the... supported by uh, old people who believed that it is, uh, uh, have uh, not only name of it, but in some uh, uh, something others. But in reality, it's only name. So, <laughs> to put it in the simplest of words for Americans out there, so you do or you don't think that Russia interfered with the U.S. election? I suppose completely no interfere because uh, uh, both candidates, uh, Joe Biden and uh, Trump. Uh, uh, not uh, I, uh, the Russian people has no sympathy, not for one, not for another. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was getting at. Uh, I personally we, don't think that Putin we, did anything. We, we cannot. We cannot. How how we can choose? Uh, uh, you know. Maybe, excuse me, because uh, um, uh, we have some like a uh, proverb in Russian. We cannot. Uh, 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 I can't. Uh, we cannot distinguish between different kinds of shit. <laughs> I agree. 
I agree. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, this is this election. It's not ours election anyway. For me, for uh, the right wing or, or de so-called Democrats, it seems me the same kind of shit. So pretty in, much. In the, uh, I I support. M m uh, anarchistic uh, ways that the election can't be true so pretty much the russian people don't believe that either candidate would benefit russia for them getting in uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes uh, i suppose the, the most people think who who can understand uh, something uh, they are not sympathy with one or another uh, Thank you so much for for answering that. I really appreciate you answering that question. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I Thank normally you. don't ask political questions on here, but I mean, uh, that's been a big burning question in the United States for years now, and I get so sick of people thinking that Russia colluded, and I'm like, I seriously doubt it, but you're a real Russian from, obviously, the Russian Federation and the Soviet Union, so I figured one of the last questions I'd ask you was about the collusion. Uh -huh. But um, is there anything else you would like to say? Uh, 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 last question about? Um, oh, is, it, is there anything else you would like to add to this interview? Uh, 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 I would like to add to that uh, I have been uh, seven times in the United States and uh, uh, I suppose that we Russians must to learn a lot from Americans and uh, a lot of things to imitate, like self-organizations, uh, because r not to wait from the government to uh, uh, some solve our problems. But uh, I'd like that Americans, if they have problems, they try to uh, solve it themselves. And uh, a lot of things we should uh, adopt uh, from United States, from Americans. Uh, and I'm a big fan of American free jazz, uh, of electronics, uh, of uh, computers, uh, uh, like Apple Macintosh. I'm, I'm fanatic of uh, Apple since 80s. I bought first <laughs> Macintosh. Uh, uh, Hell yeah. Classic, classic. I was in 1990, <laughs> uh, and a lot of things I like in America, and I have a lot of friends. Especially, I like American music, uh, and uh, I. It seems that we have a lot of things to that uh, the friendship between our countries w would be much better than any confrontations. What are some of your favorite American musicians? Uh, favorite American musician, so it's so many, <laughs> no, for many, many. No, but, uh, uh, the principal figure, I suppose, of course, is John Cage. John at Cage. The principal uh, John Cage, at the principal figure for uh, art in the uh, 20th century, uh, and uh, is uh, the, the musician of. Uh, I know Ned Rottenberg. I like his playing of saxophone, bass, clarinet. I played in uh, Russia, in Europe, with Afro-American piano player Matthew Ship. Uh, uh, it's fantastic piano player. Uh, uh, we, we played a lot. To, unfortunately, we not released. Uh, uh, I played with the uh, and uh, have the friendship with the uh, Alabama viola uh, player of free jazz, Ladonna Smith. We played a lot in former times. Many, many musicians. Amy Denayo, uh, she based in Seattle, saxophone player uh, and uh, uh, accordion. Many musicians are like Americans, and uh, with some of them I have uh, 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 I contact others. I listened to records, but uh, for me it's very, very important. Do you, uh, so you said you've been to the United States seven times? Uh, uh, I, I've been the first time in 1990, in time of Soviet Union. I came to Goodwill Games to Seattle in 1990. What was that and experience after, like? Yes, it's big experience. Then I, I, I went to also to Boston. I played in the club Middle East. Uh, I played in New York Knitting Factory in 1990. 
in each in factory. It's uh, the mes most important place for free improvised music in, in the world. And later also I came in, uh, mostly to New York, but to, to Alabama also, in uh, Georgia, in Chattanooga, Chuchu, I performed there <laughs> with the, the, the dancer uh, and uh, uh, local uh, improvisers, free improvisers. So I have a lot of contacts, had a lot of contacts with American musicians and hope that uh, somehow I came, I have written opera, not opera, but uh, theater, uh, drama music for about Marquise de Sade. And uh, I brought it with Taganka Theater to, it was my last uh, travel to America. He, he just before 9-11, uh, 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 I brought it to Connecticut, Connecticut, uh, yeah. New Haven, uh, New Haven. In New Haven, uh, we, we put it on stage and we... we uh, Marat at Marquise de Sade. Uh, it was uh, uh, performance of uh, Taganka Theater. I played uh, all kind of saxophones there. It was my, my last experience. Unfortunately, there were plans two or three years ago for me to come to America. They um, pl one of uh, Russian. Uh, cinema uh, product, uh, it was planned cinema production about mathematician Perelman, who solved uh, the most uh, problematic uh, 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 theorema in uh, ma mathematics, and it was planned for me to uh, play in cinema his uh, one of his uh, friends uh, and uh, to, uh, they asked me to to come to America. I know that now it's quite difficult to get visa. Not not just now, but uh, after these stories with Trump and uh, Putin quo uh, <laughs> problems, we uh, much more difficult to to get visa, American visa. Uh, Damn! Now, but I actually yes, didn't know that. Uh, yes, it. You, you, it's uh, for for Russians. It's much more. It closed uh, American embassy in Petersburg now. Oh. No. More. So in something. So the embassy only in Moscow. A lot of people from of the country come uh, to get visa. Should buy airplane tickets. Came from uh, Siberia to Moscow to get visa. They waited for. Uh, uh, 10, 10 weeks or something like that to, to for a flight of visa or to in, in, in a queue a disaster properly. It's much easier. I, I'm more, more often now go to Japan. Japan. <laughs> uh, it, it's yes, it's much easier to to go to Japan or to Western Europe. I go every year. I go to Germany two or three times and. Uh, Almost every year, go to Japan now to play with local musicians and uh, lecturing there and things. What's the Japanese uh, art music scene like? Uh, the Japan is something very special because in the Japanese there no barrier between the archaic local archaic n traditional music and musical avant-garde. Uh, the musicians who play uh, ethnic Japanese instruments, mi ancient, they're easily to contact with the free improvisers. Interesting for me also, uh, I, I say you as American, that a lot of Americans live in um, uh, in uh, in Japan and work there. And I many lived free there improvisers. in Yes, and uh, the, several years ago I went to le make lecture in the Technological University of Tokyo and um, uh, the rector, I don't know English word for it, it's like a, uh, the, like director, da? Yeah, or, professor? Uh, not, it's uh, uh, like a governor of all the university, what the word for it? Decan? 
I, I know what you mean. Right. What uh, the, the the most important person uh, who who govern all the universities? Superintendent. Oh, no, maybe maybe the, in Russia uh, we have word rector for that. I think it would be the uh, president of the university. Uh, if uh, maybe president of university. Yeah, that sounds right. Yes, yes, he was American, <laughs> but he refused uh, of American citizenship uh, after uh, uh, Iraq uh, war. Uh, uh, America went went for Iraq and he refused American citizenship uh, and uh, took uh, and I said uh, what citizenship you are now he he said I took Australian <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but, but he he's uh, uh, also I met uh, uh, American female bass player uh, in Tokyo she moved completely to to many Americans live there also I played the last time the, my, la, my last concert in uh, in uh, Tokyo I, I played with the Japanese uh, saxophone quintet A6Q and uh, drummer and piano drummer and piano Americans uh, two young Americans and they say me Sergey we have uh, three room apartment if you come next time we have one room for you nice <laughs> we can we can you can you can live here in tokyo with us we, <laughs> we have three rooms we will play together right on uh, yes and uh, japan i like most of all because the uh, beautiful country people, beautiful country and people not uh, uh, they have no barrier between tradition and modern they look forward and not f uh, in trying not to forget their own nature their own uh, history i like it uh, in russia unfortunately we have traditionalists very conservative uh, people who like russian uh, tradition they despise um, computers they despise uh, uh, Europe, America, everything. They, are isol they, they would like to live in some fantastic isolation. And uh, in Japanese, no. We, uh, you can... Uh, uh, they, they are he more he me mental healthy people. <laughs> I get what you mean. Yeah. You said you also uh, uh, played in Germany a bit? Uh, in Germany, yes. Uh, I, I, in, go, in Germany, I, I, I came more than 50 times to Germany. Holy <laughs> shit. Yes, yes. And uh, 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 typically, I'm going two times in a year in Germany. The last year, it was 100th anniversary of Bauhaus. And I oh, came to house. Weimar. Uh, yes, in Bauhaus. And I, uh, uh, they invited me to Weimar. Uh, uh, it's a capital of Bauhaus movement. To uh, for me, in um, uh, I performed in a German national theater. Uh, it, it's a theater before uh, near this theater is statue of Goethe and Schiller standing together, and I uh, performed there quite interesting. Um, uh, uh, program dedicated to Kandinsky, to, to Russian painter, who was partly German, and he Holy. wrote in his notebooks in not in Russian but in German language, because he 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 was or, or, or he was motherland was German, uh, and uh, uh, in the, we had a program with the professor of um, uh, Russian literature in Martin Luther University of uh, Halle in Germany uh, a flute player and a piano player who performed mostly uh, classic like Schoenberg, Hindemith uh, uh, and me, I improvised on electronic devices uh, mostly wind electronic instruments uh, and it was dedicated to poetry of Kandinsky Poetry in uh, we translated it in German and um, uh, and I tell story in this performance the, about uh, uh, Kandinsky participated in ethnographical expedition uh, uh, to Komi 
commits uh, northern part of uh, European Russia, leave Finnish people live there, the pagan people. And after Kandinsky met, met them, um, uh, he contacted with this pagan ideology, pagan religion, he changed his mind and started to paint abstract pe uh, painting. And I, we also made a German translation of this, my I, things, and I played a song of this Pagan Kumi and uh, this music changed to free jazz and they combined it with the atonal music of uh, Germany of beginning of 20th century. It was big audience mostly of uh, uh, f former DDR, former G German Democratic Republic. This is partly. This is cultural people I like. Also I played the in Berlin, the, the last year, in um, uh, on a boat uh, for uh, like uh, psychedelic psychedelic music uh, for for local German uh, Berlin Berlin scene. I like Germany very well. Like Maybe Deutschland. <laughs> Yes, yes, I like also. And, uh, I have a friend uh, in Germany, and uh, uh, also I like to play music for silent movie. And uh, I'm working with Goethe Institute in in uh, it's an institute for German culture in in Russia, and they support me for almost thirty years. You've played music for a German silent movie. Yes, many, many, and uh, the uh, many films. I started with a Faust, uh, Faust, uh, German uh, national legend, Eine deutsche Volkssage, and uh, uh, just. Uh, ich bin fließen in Deutsch. Uh, yes, and I play. I uh, I play in, uh, in November, maybe December, also one of the. Uh, plug in Florence. Uh, it's very close to this coronavirus story now. <laughs> ich kann, uh, ich kann sprechen und verstehen Deutsch sehr gut. Uh, uh, no, I am not uh, speaking German. Oh, I said well, I can, I can speak and yes, understand it pretty well. Yes, yeah, 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 yes. But uh, in Germany, uh, everybody speak English. So oh, really? Everybody is. So, yes. And they, they, uh, yes, and so. How about in Russia? Huh? In Russia, uh, uh, young generation, young people, young people, they speak English, uh, but uh, older people uh, of my age, a few people speak, but younger speak much, much better. Well, I can my, say my you're pretty fluent. Uh, my my daughter is uh, uh, she she's studying. Uh, unfortunately, now we we change. Uh, uh, because of coronavirus, we changed the uh, school system to online education, and uh, I am listening how she is trying to study English <laughs> online with the teacher. And uh, we, they started uh, in Russia now. The, uh, they started English from uh, kindergarten. Damn. Uh, uh, yes. And, uh, how if you travel abroad? How you uh, will will you do without knowing the English language? You cannot explain, cannot con connect uh, with other people. I'm I speak a... Italian also. I speak Italian much better uh, than than German. <coughs> I uh, because I'm, I work in Italy. I'm married in the Philippines. I can speak a little bit of Tagalog. Uh. Wow, wow, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lived in the Philippines for about a year. I'm about to go back once the coronavirus allows me. Have you ever been uh, to the Philippines before? No, never, never. Ne never been there. I I've been in Asia, uh, in uh, Hong Kong, in uh, South Korea, uh, Seoul. Tw I, I went twice there. Uh, Playing uh, music? And, uh, uh, yes, uh, you know, I par I'm participating in uh, so-called so Eurasian uh, theater of um, Jun Kawasaki. It's a bass player, improviser, and theater leader in uh, Tokyo, uh, who invited uh, me and uh, other musicians and actors from Kazakhstan, uh, Korea, Russia, 
and we, we, we made a performance in Seoul last year, his opera, and I played the main bad character. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, Am I the uh, first... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Huh? Oh, I was going to say... Am I the first person from the U.S. to recognize you from DK? Uh, I, I suppose yes, but uh, the former sound engineer of DK, uh, uh, he he immigrated to United States. Oh, and and I, I know that he he lived uh, in America now. He sound engineer. He made recording of all these albums in the eighties. And one album, at, at least one album of DDT, he recorded with with me together. Um, his name Valeri Valeri Sherbina. And uh, I know uh, at least one person uh, who also know about DK. It's Dima Koev. He, I know I don't know he live in America or Canada, but he uh, ju he. Uh, released uh, several uh, uh, LPs and CDs of uh, um, uh, Konstantin Rebinov. And one of CDs uh, uh, with Rebinov, I, I just get by post yesterday. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he, he printed in America or Canada he is a Russian uh, immigrant from Barnaul, from Siberia. Uh, I don't know what uh, town, America, what state he, he lives in, but uh, uh, I'm sure he knows about the key, but he never asked me. He mostly interested in uh, civil defense. Well, I'm interested in all of it, because I've... Uh... I'm 26 years old, I turn 27 next month, and uh -huh. I think it was 2012 or 2013, I was trying, because back in high school, I was obsessed with the Soviet Union, I just wanted to learn everything about it, and I was doing a project, I, I was doing a, a history report on the Soviet Union, and uh -huh. through that report, I found DK, I found Civil Defense, and a couple other bands, but DK truly captivated me, just because of how experimental, how colorful the band was, and it just blew me away, and I'm I'm so glad that seven to eight years later I get to talk to someone who actually was in the band. I mean, this interview was such a wealth of information. Uh, uh, one more uh, one question from me. Uh, you, you, you ask me about some political things, and. Uh, um, uh, it seems to me it would be uh, not good for me if it will be things uh, like my uh, answers to them will be printed. Uh, because I'm afraid they, I, could, I could not get grants from uh, state uh, authority if I will criticize them openly in the uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not not. Uh, I am afraid of, of my life. <laughs> no, I just about uh, some, uh, you know, all, all the theaters and uh, conservatories and anything in Russia is uh, uh, supported by state, not uh, the are not private. So, uh, yeah. you understand that they, yeah, they can. I, I, uh, I get they, what you mean. They, they don't like if you yeah, will be criticized them. <laughs> in, especially uh, in uh, international, uh, in, in the broad uh, well, you've not, media. You, you, you've, <laughs> not, you've not really said anything against Putin. You've mostly said that you agree with them for the most part, so I think you'd be okay. Uh, uh, yes, I most uh, no. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, I'm saying it not because I'm afraid of uh, uh, secret service or something like that. Uh, no, it's my opinion, and uh, this opinion is not supported by everybody. Uh, among the uh, among the intelligent people, among the musicians and the artists, uh, it's more. 
um, how should fashion or no fashion? It's more popular to criticize. Oh, you know, I get you. It's uh, it's more put criticize everything, especially if you criticizing power, then you true real guy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. You. But it's yes, but uh, it's not clever. <laughs> <laughs> very often because uh, but for example today uh, everybody don't like to wear a mask you understand yeah I know what you mean there uh, no nobody but I'm wearing mask I'm wearing mask because uh, not because I uh, I'm afraid to get virus and die uh, it seems me this is wearing mask it's some uh, kind of uh, um, support to nervous system of people if other person see me I'm I'm wearing mask it means for him that uh, he, he he can feel himself more safe uh, you understand me yes? yeah I get what and, you mean uh, yes but of course if I am young protester I will protest uh, against everything that is come from the power but some Sometimes power can be uh, has a right <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't, I don't know if you read my message before, but um, I usually just post my interviews to my YouTube channel. Ah, uh, yes, yes, of course you can, you can. And I, nothing, I have nothing against it. Yes. I really, really, really appreciate you doing this very long, very informative interview with me. I've learned a lot more than I did before I came into this. Uh -huh. I send you link if I will have uh, uh, the link to the uh, online of uh, from Omsk on 20s. I, I, I will send you this through, through Messenger in Facebook. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Is there any uh, last uh, comments you want to make on this? Uh, no, I, uh, you, you would like to put me question or? Huh? Oh, I was just asking you if you wanted to say anything more since we're at an hour and fifty, oh, hour and uh, forty-seven minutes in. Uh, maybe it's enough today. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Uh, uh -huh. Spasibo, okay. right? Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, Sergey. Ладно, все, пока.